welcome back YouTube Five Smokers. My name is John Piper here. Well, today is another update on the deeming regulations that the FDA has put out. Uh, some things have happened recently that I needed to update you on to keep you current. Um, uh, first thing is that I uh, I did send some letters to uh, all three of my uh, senators. Um, I got some responses back. Two of the responses were basically telling me what the deeming rule regulation was. I already knew that. So those two I just kind of put aside. A, a third one actually went in depth. It, uh, um, the uh, congressman uh, actually took some time to look into it and to let me know what is being done uh, to help us out. Um, also, um, the um, um, there has been a uh, lawsuit filed uh, on our behalf on our behalf, uh, and I want to read you some of what the lawsuit says. Uh, first of all, there's going to be two words in each one of the counts in the um, lawsuit that I want to explain to you what they mean. One of the words is going to be arbitrary. Now arbitrary means based on random choice or personal whim. So it's random and personal. Capricious is the other word. Capricious. It means given to sudden and unacceptable, I'm uh, sorry, unaccountable changes of mood or behavior. So unaccountable behavior. So uh, I don't know if those mean anything to you, but uh, those are the two words that are used. Okay, so first thing, let's go and look at um, the lawsuit and what it says. Okay. As for the litigation, the plaintiff's lawsuit lies in the FDA final rule of the deeming regulations against cigars, pipes, pipe tobacco, which were announced on May 5th, 2016, which go into effect on August 8th, 2016. The plaintiffs claim the final rule is legally defective and contrary to the Tobacco Control Act and con con congressional intent in several respects, including that it, incorre it incorrectly subjects cigars, pipes, and pipe tobacco to stricter regulatory restrictions than originally regulated products such as cigarettes. Nine counts were filed with which include Count 1. FDA's actions regarding the predicate date, which is the uh, 2007, uh, February 15, 2007 date for grandfathering tobacco in, and the substantial equivalence process are arbitrary, capricious, and abuse of discretion and not in accordance with law and exceed FDA's regulatory authority. Count two, the final rules user fee provisions are arbitrary, capricious, and not in account, uh, accordance with the Tobacco Control Act and exceed FDA's regulatory authority. Count three, the final rule user fee provisions violate plaintiff's member's right to due process and equal protection. Count four, FDA's failure to carry out a proper cost-benefit analysis violates the Regulatory Flexibility Act and Unfounded Mandates Reform Act of 1995. So that's something the FDA was, was required to do. They were required to do a proper cost-benefit analysis before they even came up with this regulation, and they never did that. Count five and six, FDA's treatment of 
premium cigars and failure to consider option two is arbitrary and capricious. They had option one and option two. Option two was a, was a lot more lenient toward tobacco, uh, pipe tobacco and cigars, but they opted to go for option one. Okay. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The final rules wor warning label requirements. Uh, imper uh, impermissible restrict free speech. Uh, eight. Regulation of tobacconists who blend finished tobacco as manufacturers is arbitrary, capricious, and not in accordance with the Tobacco Control Act and exceeds FDA regulatory authority. So basically what they're saying is, in the deeming regulation, if a brick and mortar store tobacconist has tobacco A and tobacco B, and they take those two tobaccos and they mix them together, they're considered a blender. Which I don't, you know, that's something that's ridiculous. All they're doing is mixing two tobaccos together. And the final, final one is regulation of pipes as components rather than as accessories is arbitrary, capricious, and not in accordance with law. So basically what they're saying is they're saying that the actual tobacco pipe, the pipe itself, is a component, is a component of tobacco. So basically what they're saying is you could take tobacco A, tobacco B, and a pipe and blend them together and it would be against the law, against this rule, which is ridiculous. The pipe is the accessory, not a component. Let me finish up here. The suit asked for relief by vacating and setting aside the final rule as unlawful, arbitrary, capricious and an abuse of discretion and otherwise not in accordance with law and in, ex in excess of FDA's authority. They ask for a permanent injunction restraining defendants from implementing or enforcing the final rule. So we'll see what happens, but like I said before in my other videos, uh, lawsuits are being filed. Now let's go and look at what I got from one of my Congressman Andy Barr sent me um, something very interesting. Uh, he said um, he explained to me the rule like the rest of them did, but he also in, put into put into his letter this. In response to the overreach by the FDA, Congressman Tom Cole of Oklahoma introduced H.R. 2058, the FDA Deeming Authority Clarification Act. The legislation would roll back the arbitrary grandfather date proposed in the FDA's final rule and would instead exempt tobacco products that came to market after the FDA's decision to regulate e-cigarettes as tobacco products. Effectively, the legislation would change the effective date to April 2014. The legislation would provide much needed relief to e-cigarette and vape enthusi enthusiasts and businesses, business owners who have helped develop this market over the past decade. H.R. 2058 was referred to the House Energy and Commerce Committee on April 28, 2015, where it currently awaits further action. So as usual, it's caught up in committee. Of note, during consideration of H.R. 5054, the Agriculture Rural Development FDA and regulate, Regulated Agencies Appropriation Act in the House Agriculture Appropriations Subcommittee, Representative Cole offered the language included in H.R. 2058 as an amendment to the underlying legislation. legislation sorry, H.R. 5054 Mr. Cole's amendment passed in committee by a vote of 31 to 19 and was successfully amended to the legislation. At this point, H.R. 5054 has yet to come before the full house for consideration. But should the legislation come to the floor, I will be sure to keep your views on this issue in mind when carrying my, casting my vote. 
I appreciate you reaching out to me about the important issue and value your and I value your input. So basically what he's done is they put in their own um, their own rule, but they've also attached the wording of that rule to the new FDA um, uh, agricultural bill. So uh, it's yet to come to the floor for vote, but at least we've got two avenues in Congress that will hopefully give us some relief when it comes to um, the grandfather date. Uh, I don't know if that's much of a help to anybody, but you know, at least at least some people in Congress um, are they understand what where, where we're coming from. They know there's a problem with the FDA deeming regulation, and they're trying to fix it. So, uh, believe it or not, it's hard for me to believe, but believe it or not, it looks like actually our Congress is trying to help us out, which is what they were put there to do in the first place. All right, well, that's the update that I have for now. Sorry, the lettering's a little small. I couldn't read it very well, but uh, hopefully you got the gist of where we sit and what's being done uh, to move us forward. So until my next video, I want to wish you and your family happy piping.